Hi, I want to do a quick video on um, this idea of re this re the collapsing idea of the universe and how this can be a potentially scary idea replaying the same thing over and over and over again and how the contest the context of non-existence saying instantaneous non-existence and how that idea can wish wash in your mind and understanding that you might, even though the concept, psychologically speaking, or you not necessarily fully grasp and understanding the concept of non-existence, not having awareness, or like sleeping, that's like in sleeping you have a context, context of awareness, um, and not awareness during the time, but you have a context of wake, going to sleep and waking up. Um, obviously, just because you woke up this time doesn't mean that you're going to wake up again. But the idea is there that this 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 gap that you obviously might wake up again because once you don't exist and you have no context beyond that point, who's to say something won't eventually reemerge and you might reemerge in exactly the same way you are now and in exactly the same way universe you're in you're living in now, and this could have happened a million times beforehand. It could have happened an infinite uh, amount of times beforehand, which I would obviously say that makes it null and void. The whole concept, um, but I would say, um, yeah, this whole idea of living in an in, you know infinitely recurring and infinitely collapsing and reoccurring uh, universe that, uh, idea where we're constantly uh, coming back into existence, and I would argue that we can only come back into existence as the exact same person that we are right now. We're not going to come back as something else. Um, we're going to come back exactly the same way. Um, say, theoretically speaking, hypothetically for this example, if that were the case, we'd come back as... I'd come back as me, obviously. Um, not necessarily saying that things have to be exactly the same way uh, outside of us, but obviously for me to re-exist, um, it almost begs the question, does everything else have to be the same, or can I re-emerge in some different way if something collapses and re-emerges in a different way? Um, the context of my existence based off through how many collapses of the universe. This is more like a hypothetical in consideration to, to psychology and reckon, and you know, kind of thinking about this kind of concept and question of uh, infinite reoccurrence or not necessarily infinite, but reoccurrence over and over again. Context, lost context, based off of death. Um, not necessarily know if you're going to re-experiencing the same thing. And recognizing this game and having that thought process go through your head that, oh, when I'm dead, when I'm not aware of myself, when I'm not aware of, then I don't exist anymore, is the only time I'm really going to feel any satisfaction. Uh, avoidance of pain, not experiencing any kind of pain, I'm not going to be playing the game. And I have no context of that, and obviously the only way you can come to terms with this idea is if you just come to terms with the idea and accept the fact that, well, if I re-exist again, I won't have context. I won't even know. So why even think about it? And I just have to accept it for what it is. Um, accepting that, obviously, we'll just redo the same game over and over again. Uh, and obviously, there's so many different molecules, different kind of things mixing. I can exist, someone else can exist, that exists now or did exist and a, in a different universe but based on you know but they can exist everything made it so that they can exist but not uh, well actually no considering that we come from a biological machine and process would you consider it's the biological process based off of our DNA and the things that we got from previous generations or is it consideration of just things molecularly turning into where you are now does the process have to exa happen in exactly the same way if we exist um, or does it just have to, you have to exist in some way by the molecules and all these things shaping up to create something that, convey, that creates the uniformity of your being again. At least the being of your self-awareness and being and recognizing that you're, and recognizing that you are the being, that um, a being, and it's exactly the same being as you were in this life or in this whatever circumstance. Speaking entirely hypothetically, I'm just, it's just a psychological, you know, uh, you know, you know, deconstruction process of an idea like this. I'm not speaking out of anything but my ass when I talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, it's speculation, nothing more, nothing less. An idea, uh, an uncomfortable, vague idea, concept of this 
Oh, will I re-exist when I die? I don't have context. Will I be dead forever? Will I re-exist as the same consciousness having no recognition of the previous life I made, of being made up of entirely uh, in molecules that worked in the same way? Do the molecules obviously have uh, their own distinctions? Obviously, I'm probably the consciousness that makes up this idea, the consciousness that's constantly moving and moving forward, something that's constantly changing, but the, the memory, the the boundary, the, the holding of these concepts in, this, in our mind obviously holds some kind of meaning as a, uh, con, you know, this, this bundle of something that has some kind of meaning, this continuity based off of memory and the thing that makes me seem like me. There's no me, there's me brain and things like that um, and how that has a relevance to an idea of uh, considering if this can all happen again, if all this it's based on this brain thing um, and this recognition and being, being, experiencing the roller coaster ride of this life thing, going up and down and seeing if, uh, if I can re-exist based off of these mechanisms, but based off this neurology recognition, being me, being who I am, being a sentient being, being exactly the way I am, and if things are going to happen exactly the same way and create me the same way, or things will happen a different way, and I'll just be subject to different circumstances, and they just happen to have made me again. Um, but I think it's basically off of this awareness of the surroundings around me and things happening and such and so forth and whatnot. And hopefully, um, there's, not, there's nothing you can do. You can't hope for, for something like this. You can't hope for, against something like this. And there's nothing you can do but sit here and just live out the reality, determinism, blah, 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 live it out. And just say, well, there's nothing I can do, you know. If we end up nuking ourselves out of existence, recognizing the game's a silly, pointless game, well, what if that, that was determined to happen, and what if that just, you know, we all just redo the whole same game again? Uh, that's a scary idea that can obviously marinate in your mind when you recognize the truth of reality for not enjoying life and recognizing maybe this is just going to happen over and over again. Obviously, I won't know it. Maybe it happened before. Who knows? Uh, not likely, not necessarily any, there's no proof for that at all. Um, but the fact is that the concept of recognizing, a concept that goes to your mind and recognizing that maybe I might re-experience this whole con, this whole thing again, and, oh Jesus. And thinking about it just in and of itself right now is a painful experience, recognizing that all the crap that you may have gone through in your life will just be re-experienced. It's just you're experiencing the exact same way, or deja vu, obviously illusions, uh, there's, uh, you know, astrology and things like that, and people that believe in astrology, it's phantasmagorical, you know, pseudoscience and applying, um, things like that, and to, um, uh, you know, concepts that we can obviously, uh, prove to be true and things like that, um, so applying that kind of concept wouldn't be necessarily a good thing, so this pseudoscience isn't necessarily helpful in applying anything to the reality that we're living in, it's only you know, comforting the mind, but comforting the mind and from a deluded point of view, because obviously when you recognize the truth and things like that, you're not going to be getting anywhere when you recognize, oh shit, crap, I might experience this whole thing over again, but I'll have to re-experience it uh, from my own point of view over on the same process that happened to begin with. So I'll re-experience the same process, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is just coming from speculation. I'm just trying to get the concept out, and I keep repeating myself, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, this is... It's, a, it's an idea that obviously reads some kind of scary sensation of the future, but a scary sensation of some kind of um, understanding the world and hopeless, where you're stuck, obviously, in a situation that you can't do anything about. You're playing out your game, and if the game ends, you might end up playing out the whole game again. But you won't know. But why am I experiencing right now? That's another point I want to make sure I get in this video. Is why am I experiencing this now without giving context? Deja vu, yeah. What not? Bullshit, bull crap, you know, pseudoscience. And applying reality to fic fiction to reality. Or context of fiction to reality. If something that has absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, so the context is you're experiencing... Um, um, you know, uh, why am I experiencing myself here right now and have no recognition or no context? You obviously have to have context to give some kind of experience, but just because you have amnesia and you're experiencing something right now doesn't mean something didn't previously happen. Um, obviously, we're all given, if that's the case, we're all given amnesia, hypothetically speaking, that we're all given amnesia, and then we're experiencing out the life again, and then we're given amnesia based on the universe re-collapsing and doing the whole thing over again. 
Um, doesn't mean it, nothing happened beforehand. Doesn't mean just because I don't have a memory of it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Um, but it's a confusing concept of why am I experiencing myself now through this point of view? Why am I who I am? Obviously, sort of disconnected from the topic of the video to begin with. But we're obviously um, we're experiencing something. Um, for a point of view based on no other context but the point of view that we were given in our life, even the vague point of view that we have, say growing up being, you know, an infant, and you still recognize that that's you. There's some kind of concept, or there's some kind of there's context. There's something around you that gives context, and even if it's not you, there's something around you. If everyone had any ad name niche, that would obviously destroy the context. But that's not reasonable to bring into this kind of equation. Um, it might be, but I don't know necessarily. I'm sort of getting lost in thought in the process of thinking about this. So, yeah, why are we who we are? Why, there has to be some context to give us. And when you die, there's no context, and it almost seems instantaneously, who's to say you're not going to just exist again and wake up? And, you know, that's where you apply this whole concept of, um, you know, applying. And, like, empathy doesn't do anything. It's just a concept, like, sitting there not doing anything about it and, you know, acknowledging it doesn't do anything. Um, but recognizing, you know, um, the truth, um, man, where was I going? So, yeah, you know, the context, you need context, and without this context, what, what, what's, what, you need some kind of context to give you a, some kind of acknowledgement of the things that are going on around you. Um, I mean, I lost the point I was going to make originally, I change the subject um so yes um we need uh, why are we who we are who's to say it's not going to happen again um it's just, it's, just, it's just a hypothetical concept to bring up in consideration at least from our point of view and why it seems like a very unfortunate state of mind to take because it's obviously something we can't necessarily from our point of view recognize especially you know considering it might have happened just because you can't remember it doesn't mean it didn't happen but obviously you know considering looking into the you know the real science behind it obviously can make a proof that maybe you know proof more one way or the other so i would say that obviously you have to take that in consideration that is based off of our own point of view so considering that i would say that obviously um that it's something inconclusive but it's not likely there's no proof but that doesn't mean it's not possible and just because we forget or we take the amnesia pill doesn't mean it something didn't happen. You know, obviously, since we don't have context, doesn't mean it didn't happen to begin with. Um, so, obviously, there's context around us, though. There's continuity around us. And it's about the continuity around us as opposed to the context from our point of view. As opposed to the idea that's not continuing, you know, has some kind of continuity, which would be some other universe recollapsing, doing the same thing over and over again. And especially in the same way, proving that as well. Um, so, hypothetically speaking, whatever, um, it's a scary thought, it's a scary concept in recognizing the truth of the game that we're playing, especially, and recognizing the only time you're going to, you know, when there's no con, and that you're comfortable, that there's no con, is when there's no context to your existence, or like you're comfortable, you, you go to sleep, you're comfortable, but it's just over in an instant, unfortunately, and even when you're dreaming, it's kind of a very fleeting thing, and it's over before you know it. And you're right back up to uh, getting up and doing the same old crap and recognizing the same old crap. You're stuck in a cycle, a loop, and the idea of you know even thinking about it happening over and over again, not even infinite, but just the process of thinking one at a time over and over again gives you the concept of some sort of scary uh, recognition or possibly realization. Oh, you know, it's not really realization, but realization at least thinking about the idea that can, that can be a possibility or something like that. Um, and it's a scary idea that there's nothing you do about it when you have no context. Um, is when you're the most comfortable, you're at the zero, and it happens over and it's instantaneous, and you, you have no awareness. So there's no you, or there's no you to experience it, or you're not a, you're not aware of it. Unfortunately, um, all you can do is hopefully for this idea is hope to have the best life possible. You had a crappy life, considering that it's like oh well I have to replay the same thing over and over again. Will I be the same me? Will I be, will I be just as aware? Will I be the awareness? Obviously, applying that awareness to some other thing, being the same thing as you in another universe oh, that happens after this, or at the same time, whatever, um, that, that's happening. And saying, you know, obviously, am I going to be the one aware of all this stuff happening, or is it going to be something else that's going to be aware um, of the same thing happening? 
There's going to be some other me aware, or is it going to be me, the same awareness, the same thing that's happening now? Um, and this uh, goes to the whole idea of, you know, obviously, we're even though we meet us, at least, you know, not in this the world that we're living in now, we're not going to be living and experiencing the, um, you know, obviously giving birth, you're giving birth to someone else that's going to be living. You can always put yourself and inject yourself and saying, what I want to wake up is this person that I'm giving you know, I'm waking up or someone else is waking up. What I want to be that person because they're just going to be just as aware they're human and not only humans but any other creature waking up as any other creature. But you can apply that more to human as an understanding of who you are and the human, the human um, condition and recognizing you're going to be caught in this ignorance, this cycle. Um, but the cycle of, of ignorance can obviously, the ignorance of bliss can obviously bring forth some kind of comfort, but obviously a comfort based off of absolutely nothing but being ignorant and any new knowledge you gain can be a knowledge that can make you recognize reality more and being caught up in ignorance doesn't do anything and but to try and maintain that ignorance and not recognizing the world that we're living in um so it's about maintaining that ignorance at that point not waking up as wanting as any other these um these these beasts or the, any of these other are these uh, beasts of burden or any of these other um you know, creatures or human beings or these precious commodities that we call sentience. And uh, hopefully that you recognize, especially taking accountability for giving life to someone, um, that you have to take responsibility and recognize that everything that happens to them is your responsibility as well. And you have to take more responsibility in regarding the possibility of something happening to someone else. Um... You have to take responsibility and recognizing if something bad happens, something bad happens to someone else. You recognize that truth and take responsibility for yourself and recognizing that you're um, that you can impose the same kind of hardship and pain and suffering, even though the circumstances may be different. You've brought up the possibility of that happening, brought up more in position, not only on the person that you brought up in position on, but the imposition that that may have on other people. And it's best just to uh, assume the best, unless it could be told beforehand that having a kid or imposing on someone is going to do some good you're best to assume unless you know something the circumstances surrounding that kind of situation that not having or imposing the new life would be doing the best outcome for everyone unless uh, readily apparent that you know someone can tell someone can foretell, read the crystal ball and say that this would obviously be a good thing for everyone in helping reach our inevitable end so and you have to take more responsibility recognizing this kind of concept of um, burden and imposition. So, uh, recognizing this kind of thing and recognizing you wouldn't want to wake up as someone doing a much worse game as you are, waking up in horrible circumstances in a different, you know, and, and you know, doing the same old, you know, game, ignorant game over and over again, especially if it's in a poor country or if you're an animal, or something like that, just recognizing the game going on, and how hopeless and helpless it is, where you're just stuck, and there's nothing you can do, but try to mitigate the pain that you have, and the fact that you're not going to be able to avoid uh, suffering, and the imposition is obviously something that's a scary thought in and of itself. So I think that's all I need to say. Um, I covered a few subjects in this video, and I think that's all I need to mention. So, thank you, and until next time, goodbye.